G'day Ziggy D here and in this video I'm going to be showing off the new skill in Path of Exile, Glacial Cascade. This skill dropped in the patch today and uh, I've had a chance to test around, uh, sort of play around with it on a new character here that I'm uh, rocking in Ambush League. And uh, at first I thought, you know, that this kind of just looks kind of like Freezing Pulse, like what's the real difference? Sure it doesn't have a projectile tag on it. But uh, it seems to function pretty similarly to Freezing Pulse, what's the real difference here? But after actually playing with it for a while, I've actually decided that this is actually a very interesting skill. And uh, it has some pretty unique mechanics that I'll go over in this video, so I've had a bit of time to sort of process this stuff. And hopefully I'll share this information with you in a somewhat interesting way. But first, let's just take a look at how the skill functions, just like basically in combat, and then we'll get into like the minute, the, the real interesting details. But uh, so far I've been pretty impressed with the damage just while leveling. I've had it under a few, a few levels under what my freezing pulse was. It's only it required level 25 at the moment, and yet in level 32 zones I was, I'm doing fairly decent damage. So I've been able to progress with it and level with it, and uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it works. Also, it's a badass looking spell. Casting it downstairs is pretty cool, and casting it upstairs is pretty cool as well, the way it sort of spikes out towards enemies. It's, uh, as I said, it seems pretty simple at fir you know, on first inspection, like, sure, it's an, it's an AoE skill and you can increase its AoE a bit by uh, in using increased AoE, or you can use Conk Effect to make it a bit stronger but smaller AoE. But uh, there's actually a lot of other stuff that goes on with this skill that we'll kind of go over. Uh, I even have a Photoshop diagram to show you guys. So, first, however, let's head on back here, and I'll, I'll show you guys just sort of like a few of the basics about the skill gem, the tags and things like that, and some of the uh, implications these have when building it, and then I'll talk about some of the uh, interesting sort of background mechanics. So, first up, we have this is a uh, cold, it's a spell, and it's an AoE skill. It has those three tags. However, what those tags don't also show is that it also deals physical damage. And uh, the average physical damage seems to be about half of what the cold damage is around this level. Not sure if this ratio changes as you move, but it deals less physical damage, but physical damage is still a part of it. First I thought that was kind of weird, but then I thought, hmm, spikes that sort of travel outwards and impale enemies kind of is a physical form of damage, I suppose. So uh, I guess that's why the uh, so thematically why that exists. But uh, straight away, that means you can do some pretty interesting things with this. You can use Added Fire, and you can use the Hatred Aura. So I've been able to use... Let me uh, disable Clarity here for a bit, and you'll be able to see that I can increase my DPS through equipping uh, Hatred here, or heal my mana. Uh, DPS is currently 172 with my current setup, and uh, enabling Hatred takes that up to 186. Now, because the physical damage is not as high as the cold damage, it's not a huge increase, but it is a way of boosting this, this spell's damage in a similar way that you do with EK. You can use Added Fire or Hatred to boost it. You can also use uh, Added Lightning, you know, any of those sorts of things, Added Chaos and uh, added, added Cold to just increase the flat damage that it deals. It has 80% damage effectiveness there, you can see on the, uh, on the uh, tag there. And uh, because it hits multiple times, this actually isn't too bad. 80% reduc 20% reduction in damage from ad from like things like added lightning uh, isn't too bad when you consider that it hits multiple times. Especially when you start to consider that it hits the same, it can hit the same enemy multiple times, two to four times, uh, based on my testing so far. So uh, that actually works out being pretty good. I think added chaos and added lightning will both be pretty nice ways to scale the damage. And hatred is kind of like an extra non-support gem way of scaling the damage as well if you have the uh, the mana to support. But uh, even when you're running with a party, it means people running Hatred, which is most parties are going to be buffing your damage with this spell as well. So pretty cool. There's a lot of ways to scale the base damage of this item. I mean, of this particular spell. Uh, other than that, it has a 6% base critical strike chance, which is pretty decent when it comes to being a spell. And as I said, when you start scaling crit with it, uh, hitting multiple times, you can you can freeze things pretty well. But uh, you can also shock stack them if you're using something like added lightning. You can hit them, you know, twice. You can hit the same enemy twice, shock stack him twice. You know, the first one will be very short duration, but the second one will be a bit longer. So uh, I think it has some good potential there for crit builds and for adding lightning and things like that to it. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, other than that, it seems pretty basic. Uh, it, it is an AoE skill, so that means you can increase or decrease the AoE as you desire. The base AoE, uh, keeping in mind that I have a small amount of increased area of effect from the passive tree, is about, if we sort of stand at the edge here, reaches to about there, so this line just here. And the radius of it is about the exact same width of these flagstones. I actually tested this earlier. You can see it's about the same width of those flagstones. Now adding the increased area of effect gem, this is only a level 1 one, so it's only 14% increase. Uh, increases it 
out another, a little bit beyond another flagstone there, and actually a little bit outside of the flagstone. So, you know, it's, it gives it an all-round uh, increase. It gives it more length and more girth. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Conk Effect does, obviously, the reverse of that, and you can see the effect is a little bit more dramatic with Conk Effect. Let me actually find my Conk Effect gem. There we go. You can see that it uh, it pulls it down much shorter there, much, much shorter. Now, I was speaking to Chris Wilson this morning, and before the gem launched, he said that uh, modifying the AoE in any way has a positive effect on the spell, just in different ways. And I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting. So he was also suggesting that decreasing the AoE has positive effects, and I have been able to confirm this. Now, this has a set amount of strikes, basically, uh, uh, impaling... Uh, effects from the different uh, icicle shards. Uh, it has a set amount of strikes and uh, increasing the AoE spreads out those strikes, makes them hit more things. There's, imagine little small circles. Now uh, putting uh, increased AoE spreads that out, makes it easier to hit more mobs, that's fine, it's good for farming. However with Conk Effect, and if you're not stacking any AoE in your character, it's actually possible to overlap these strikes even more. So by default, without this, most enemies you'll be hitting will be hit twice. And I actually have a diagram to show this in a bit more detail in a second. But uh, adding Conk Effect can actually make you hit them three times or more. So uh, this is actually a pretty interesting way to scale it. Not only does Conk Effect increase the base damage, but can also increase the amount of times you hit enemies. So, let's hop on back to town here and switch over to my handy diagram. Oh yeah, the diagram coming out. So, here we have uh, Glacial Cascade with a normal AoE. Represented here, this is the caster, and these are the AoE fields. So this is the individual strike. So each circle here represents one AoE field or strike. Now you'll notice just at the start of the caster, there is one AoE field, and then it is overlapped by a second one. Now at any point, this is the enemy entity here, this is say a skeleton or a void bearer or something like that. This guy could be standing here, he could be hit by two of these different fields, you know, if he's any anywhere in this sort of area here, he's going to be hit by two of these fields. Now I have noticed that when you're at melee range with enemy uh, entities, that sometimes you'll only hit them once. I think the size of the entity actually plays a factor, because I've seen with some bosses and stuff like that, it's possible to hit them three times, so sitting sort of in here, the enemy is large enough, can actually be hit by three different entities. So I think entity size, uh, by three different AoE fields. So I think entity size does make a difference. And uh, the smaller entities, when they're in melee range, only seem to get hit once sometimes. So I think it is possible to only be hit, hit an enemy once here. So that means effective range is always going to be within this range here, you know, within where the overlaps occur. Same deal at the end, if you're hitting them with just the very end of the glacial spikes, you'll only be hitting them once as well. So keep that in mind when using the skill. You want to make sure you're using uh, that effective range, which is some, going to be something like in this area from your character here, depending on how much AoE you have. So that's a pretty important first note to take, you know, sort of to take care of. Now when you increase the AoE, these things move further apart, but it always seems to be the case that it's possible to hit enemies twice. Uh, with all of the increased AoE I've used so far, I've even seen someone using over 100% increased AoE, and I'm still seeing enemies get hit twice. So it seems like that's like the bottom cap of how many times enemies can be hit by uh, Glacial Cascade. So it's always possible to hit things twice. However, interesting things start to occur when you use Conk Effect. So here we can see a representation of the Conk Effect. The circles have gotten close enough together, or they've contracted into each other so much that they're actually overlap once more. So again, at melee range, uh, you're going to be hitting them once. I think it might be possible that you're always hitting enemies twice with Conk Effect. It's pretty hard to test this, so I was, wasn't quite sure if it was once or twice at melee range. But um, enemies tend to move around a lot. And uh, but you can you can guarantee the two hits very easily, uh, and even at the end, this area for two hits at the end of the area is much easier to obtain. But what's really important is if you have an enemy in here, you're actually getting hit by three of the different fields, and this actually seems to happen most of the time. I'm seeing like two hits occasionally with Conk Effect, but a lot of the time three hits, especially if you're in that sort of uh, you're in that sweet spot for Glacial Cascade. So uh, increasing the amount of hits with Conk Effect in addition to increasing the damage through the Conk Effect support gem. So uh, very nice stuff. Now I'm thinking that if we have a larger sized enemy, like a boss or something like that, let's say Brutus or Dominus or uh, Piety or something like that, they're a little bit bigger than the average mob. It's possible to hit them four times, and I've heard of people confirming four times, though I haven't been able to do this myself yet. So uh, I, think that is, uh, I think that is possible there to hit them you know, with the extra AoE field. But uh, pretty interesting mechanics on this skill, and that's what I think really separates it from Freeze Pulse, is this uh, sort of playing around with AoE and having positive effects both on the increased AoE and both on the Conk Effect side of things uh, makes it fairly interesting.
So another thing I wanted to talk about was like kind of building effectively for this skill. Now as I mentioned, crit strike chance is quite, the base crit strike chance on this skill is quite high and the overlapping with lightning damage lends itself pretty strongly to crit builds and that's what I'm going to be building for myself in Ambush League, a crit glacial cascade character and I think that should work out pretty well. Now because it's physical and cold damage, you know, a, pr a fraction of this spell's damage is made up by physical damage, this actually uh, kind of creates some interesting scenarios in terms of the passive tree. Now, I was making this character before the skill dropped and I was picking up a lot of cold damage. Now, I've actually decided that cold damage isn't the best way to scale it, nor is elemental damage. Because uh, a part of this is made up by Fizz, whenever you're picking up cold or elemental damage, that has not been scaled by that. Sure, if you're using Hatred to convert some of that Fizz, or if you're using, uh, you know, if you're just getting elemental damage and you're using Added Fire to convert some of that Fizz to Fire, then uh, you're going to be benefiting that a little bit, but you're not benefiting that base physical amount in any way. So I think the best uh, and most effective things to scale this skill are actually spell damage, uh, probably car speed's obviously helpful with any type of spell, and crit strike chance. So crit strike chance, crit strike damage, and spell damage seem to be the way to go. Of course, incre uh, increased AoE damage, sorry, like increased area damage here, uh, is also a good way to scale, because that's going to scale both of the forms of damage. But I think if you're building, trying to build for, you know, maximum damage efficiency with this character, you should probably not be worrying about the cold damage too much, and instead Instead, more focusing on base spell damage as much as you can get, so then you're scaling the fizz higher, and then after the hatred thing happens, uh, you can get a bit of extra damage because you you know you have a higher fizz damage to go off of. You notice I have a bit of spell damage in my in my on my character already, and uh, while the base fizz damage is 8 to 13 on the tooltip, I'm dealing uh, 17 to 28 fizz damage. So that's scaled by the f uh, spell damage by the uh, spell damage. But the cold damage has been scaled even further because I have that cold damage from the passive tree. So I think spell damage, crit strike chance, cast speed are the main things to go for. And uh, maybe only get the really juicy cold damage things. Uh, unless you just kind of want to ignore the fizz damage though, I think you're probably sacrificing some damage effectiveness there. Now just some final little points to go over. Uh, the quality on Glacial Cascade I've seen gives uh, half a point of area damage per quality. So at 20 quality you have 10% increased area damage. So that's just a straight up 10% uh, increased damage to the spell. It's kind of funny that they went for area damage, but that just is the case with Glacial Cascade. So uh, its quality is pretty decent and probably worth getting on this skill. Now just because I know a lot of people ask, uh, it's not tagged with projectile, so things like LMP, like with Freeze Pulse, won't work. Uh, it has like an inherent pierce, but it's not a projectile anyway, so you can't use anything like fork or anything like that either. So in the end, it ends up being quite different to Freeze Pulse, especially when you consider the overlapping of the different attacks, the different AoE fields, and uh, overall, I think this is a pretty interesting spell. It's too easy, too early to say whether this will be like super effective, but so far it seems pretty strong for leveling, and uh, a few people have tested it, you know, on their you know, on their pre-made characters and have said it looks pretty good, but uh, it'll take a little while for us to build some characters and truly test it out. But uh, let me know what you think. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.